Hello and welcome back. Today I have an uh, LCR uh, tweezers and it is from the brand uh, Soji. And if you think Soji, I think I heard of the brand before, well you probably saw one of these uh, oscilloscope multimeters, non-contact voltage uh, detector. And Soji thought it would be smart to use an OLED as uh, in, in all the modern devices. And why is that good? Well, I had LCR meters before, like this one from my stack. It has LCD, but the point with LCD is it is a little bit less flexible. So it's only for right-handed. They use OLED and they even use it for left and right-handed. So what do we have? It's kind of a white label box. It doesn't say Soji on the box, but I saw that before with the oscilloscope multimeters. I think they also uh, make devices for other companies and they mostly, they are the main uh, company that produces them. I like it that it comes in a protective case. And here is the tweezer. It's a uh, nice small, very lightweight. Let's get the display off. Uh -huh. uh, it comes with a manual. Very small for my old eyes, but nicely in English. I will scan that, print that on the A4. And it comes with a USB cable, probably to charge. And it has USB-C, very smart choice. You saw in the past that they used the micro USB or the other fragile things. The USB-C is in that sense a lot stronger. So let's see, when it charges, we can see here the red light, that is good. They are printed, let me go very quickly. OLED display, automatic ranging, one sample per second. It has a data hold function, English, Chinese, left-handed, right-handed, very nice. Volume setting, probably for the beeper. Backlight, auto power off, can be switched off completely or five minutes or 120 minutes. You can calibrate your ohms even, factory uh, restore, and that also, if you messed up your own calibration, it will also go back to factory, that's good. You can do firmware updates, that's nice. You see that a lot with uh, modern uh, equipment. I don't see it can measure voltage, it does have a diode uh, measured mode, but it is not necessarily made to... Uh, to measure voltages that some of the tweezers have. But instead of just LCR, also the Q and RS. Nice. It's quite compact. I think it's uh, like 14, 15 centimeters. So it's less than six, a little bit more than one inch. So well, let's see if we can go through the menu easily. There are three buttons, on off, mode button, and we have here the left or right. And we can go into the menu, step through and accept. So let's see what we can do. It is now automatically in auto mode with 0.6 volts. And we see an RS value and a D value. We can go to manual resistance mode and in resistance we have RS and Q. In capacitors mode we also have RS and D. Here we in inductance we have RS and Q. Diet mode we probably have the voltage. Uh, resistance in the bottom here. And this is continuity. And this is auto mode again. If we go in the menu, we can step through it. We can, we are now on language. I think I need to accept first, yeah. And then we can go to Chinese or English, accept. We can go down. Here we have the directions. It is now to right-handed, but it will flip if I go left. Here we are. Now it is all left-handed. Isn't that cool? I like that I think more and more about these uh, things. Here we have the volume. If you listen well, you hear a beep. Now for me it's loud enough. 
but you can uh, decrease that. We have here the backlight. You can lower that to save the battery. For me, that's okay. We have a timer. This is the auto power off. It's now to 15 minutes. We have a calibrate function that you can use um, to calibrate the resistance. And here we have a restore. And if you do that, it restores everything, including the uh, user calibration. And here we have the information. That is it. So what about the parameters and the accuracies? I um, enlarged a little bit the manual. So what I have here, it's, it turns out it measures in three frequencies. The 100 hertz, 1K, it was in 1K, we saw that in blue, and in 10K, and the parameters it can give you is LC, RD, Q, and RS. You can apparently also select the voltages 0.3 and 0.6 volt. I think the volt was 0.6. Well, at 100 hertz in resistance, it is about 1%. It can increase a little bit in 1K, what is the default setting here to half percent. And capacitance, it is to also five, between five and two here, between five and two here. They are very open about the calibration. You can do this user calibration where you calibrate the resistance. You need to use uh, chip carbon film resistors and not wire wounds. Um, and you need to have for uh, 0, 1, 10, 100, 1K, 10K, 100K, 1 meg and 10 meg and you do an open calibration and then you can store that. Um, if you messed up somehow, you can just do a factory restore and this will be back to normal. So let's play a little bit in uh, practice. I have the DMM check plus. This is the older version. I have a new version coming, by the way, which is interesting. Uh, this one does have the LCR board, so we can do the inductance, the capacitance, and the resistance. Uh, these are, some are 1%, some are 0.1%, but they have been calibrated against uh, 8.5 digit multimeter, I think. So we can see what the values really are for this one. So let's see, how does that work in practice? Switching it on. Takes two, three seconds to boot. In auto mode, 0 0.6 volt, 1K. So let's try with the 100 ohms. How much does it say it is? It says it's 100.1. Then we get the 1K. That is 1k in a bit also. This is 10k, 10 hour. The measuring is quite fast. 100.1. It takes one and a half, two seconds. How fast does it switch over if I go now to the one micro? One hundred nanos. Ten nanos and one nano. Interesting to see also if you measure it uh, has the dual display. So if I measure here the the one K, you can also see in the bottom it has the RS, which is also 1K, and you see the quality factor also on the right button. But of course, the same is if you do that with capacitors, and that makes it a little bit more interesting. Because the capacity is 10.80 nanos, but we can see the RS is also there. And we have the dissipation also. Well, if we measure the coils inductance, then we see we also have an RS and we have a quality. What I do notice if if I do the one micro only, it doesn't detect it automatically. So it thinks I need it needs to measure resistance and then it says it's uh, 
160 milliohm. So it can really do very low in the resistance, which is interesting. So then we need to manually switch it over. Resistance, capacitors, inductance. And let's see if it is now able to do the one. And it is. Now it says it's 1.1, which is actually quite accurate. So even though it doesn't detect automatically, it says 1.1. Look at this. This is 1.1. So I wanted to test with a diode and I don't think it works in auto mode because it will go to resistance. So then we switch it manually. We switch it over to diode and then I was thinking, yeah, but which one is the positive? I don't see a plus or a minus or a different color or I'm just missing that. I don't see that. But anyway, I was just testing the diode anyway. And look at what I do in the sign here in the front you see the diet and if I turn around the diet you will see the sign also changes so you don't need to know which is the positive or the negative because it will just show it yep. and it flips pretty cool well, let's see what it does with electrolytic. They already say themselves, if you go uh, to a higher capacitance, then sometimes you need to switch it over because, let's see, they say here up to 5 millifarad, it can be in automatic mode. And uh, above you really need to switch it. Then it can go up to 20 millifarad, but then you will need to go to uh, manual mode capacitance mode. So let me just pick a small one first. Yeah. I think I have them all mixed up, but let's just see what it uh, does. It says it is uh, 100 nanos, so that is 0.1 micro. Well, I need to get my magnifier for this. So oh, that was okay. Let's go a little bit bigger. I have really no clue what we have here. And we try again. I am not uh, worrying about which one is up or down or positive or negative. This one says it is about uh, 285 micros. And the other way around, it says still 285 micros. So what is it really? On the capacitor, it said 330, but let me get my uh, other LCR, which I trust a little bit uh, better, and probably the value will be correct. Look at that. Also lower than 300. And the other set, 285, I think. So I would say close enough. So let me get the bigger one. Also from the box, this is a thousand, and it says it is 8077, but again, Chinese caps. Also lower. Okay, then much bigger. I have here uh, 4700. This should not work in auto mode, but let's try it anyway. Uh, it indeed doesn't. No, it says caps. 4.17 millifarad. So that is uh, 4200. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And it gives you nice the T factor in the RS. Yeah, Chinese caps. What can I say? This one is even lower. When I did my other videos about LCR meters or the tweezers, people said, yeah, you need to try also in circuit testing because that is very valuable because then you can just uh, stick on the PCB and see what the values uh, are. But the point is there are so many components in, uh, 
in parallel or some in series. Well, series you don't notice too much, but you don't know necessarily where all the tracks go. So if you measure a cap on the power rail, you're actually measuring lots and lots and lots of caps on that rail. So, well, I, I, I will do a little bit of testing, but I don't expect very amazing results because we simply don't know how many components in parallel we are testing at the same time. But if you a very simple power supply, I would think, little transformer, a bridge rectifier, was probably a regulator, and uh, more or less it. But we have some diets here, so let me switch to diet mode. Diet would probably be possible. It doesn't happen too often that you have diodes in parallel, but you could have some caps over it. Here we are. It measures the diode. It is cut out on the right side, so that is okay. I can try to measure some resistance. 2.4. Okay. This one, 2.8. Yeah, I don't know. They also could be in parallel. I have a scener here, so also on the scener diode we can probably not measure. No, it will just give me resistance of maybe something else that is there. So that's the problem with in circuit that you are not sure exactly what you are measuring when you measure a component. So that's it. I will uh, make a little list of the values that we measured with the device and what it should be according to the DMM checklist. And then we can see uh, if it is within the 2 to 5% what it said it should be. Um, yeah, the weight. I think the weight is nice. If I've been playing it for about an hour and my hand doesn't feel tired. Sometimes when you have the AAA batteries inside, you really feel it uh, pulling. But uh, now with this small battery, it's not. I like what I did to put an outlet because it's very flexible and this time they actually used it and made it left-handed and right-handed both, which is a good idea to everyone can use it. The sample is one a second. Sometimes you need to wait one and a half, two seconds to see the value, but the auto mode seems to work reasonably well. And if it doesn't, it just says in the manual why not. If the value is too high, you need to set it to manual. Sometimes the value is too small. And in diet mode, you really need to tell it. it we are now the, dealing with the diet. And uh, the dual display. So we have the Q, the RS, or the D value also in the bottom. which can also be uh, very useful if you are debugging. That's it. Thank you for watching. And uh, hope to see you next time.